Hello again, welcome back to a new video. Uh, this Monday I've just been focusing on getting the transitions between the character and the vehicles working. So what I have so far is um, when you go near a vehicle it'll tell you, it'll give you a hint, press Y to go on whatever vehicle. Um, so we can choose Let's say the bike. So right now there's no like transition animation. I'm planning to have one though, uh, where he like kind of flips into the air onto the bike or whatever, and then off some particles to kind of mask over the uh, the small teleport that will happen when he gets into the bike. Um, yeah, uh, and then right now you can <laughs> transition straight from one vehicle to another. But yeah, one problem I'm having right now is after you get off the vehicle, it basically respawns an empty vehicle. So basically, um, there's kind of three things happening here. Uh, I have my separate character here. I have the empty vehicle, which has a trigger on it. And then when I press Y, it'll delete the player and the empty vehicle and create the vehicle with the player on it. And then after I jump off, the vehicle will be destroyed and it will spawn a new uh, platformer character and empty vehicle. And when it spawns a empty vehicle, the, the connection between the, um, the UI and the empty vehicle gets lost. So I need to figure out how to uh, make it so that connection always happens and then it'll always give the hint because uh, now that I jumped off the bike it won't give me the hint anymore. There is some problems with the uh, vehicle floating after I get off so I'm gonna have to add some gravity to those. And I think there's, there might be a problem where if there's two vehicles really close to each other... Oh, that just straight up made the skis disappear. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah there's some problems definitely <laughs> that I need to fix. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of funny. <laughs> what happens if I... Over here. Oh no. I've destroyed the whole game. But yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll uh, get back to you tomorrow. This Tuesday I was just fixing up those uh, problems. Or I got most of them fixed except for one. Uh, with the vehicles and the the hint not showing up after you uh, get out of the vehicle. So if we go up to the bike it'll say press Y to ride bike and then originally after you get off the bike um, when it spawned this uh, empty bike it would not have the connection to the hint but uh, I fixed it so now it'll always uh, be connected and every time you walk up to the bike, it'll give that hint. Um, and it'll work for all the vehicles too. Also, when you're in a vehicle and you go up to another one, you won't be able to directly jump from one to another. Uh, you have to get out first. Um, the one problem that I'm still having is if you're uh, in the radius of two or more vehicles, um, it's still... <laughs> spawns two players and then if you get out there's like I don't know it, you can just keep multiplying them <laughs> so that's where I'm at the other thing I did today was work on the uh, dialogue box and um, it's gonna take a bit of setting up because I want it to uh, have localization uh, built right into it so I'm going to need to set up some classes for getting the right uh, language and 
stuff like that. Um, but uh, so far I just have the the UI here and it's just the basic uh, art right now. But um, yeah, I'll make it look better later on once I get it all working. This Wednesday I was working on the localization for the game. So I was focusing on the hints. I know I had the uh, dialogue box kind of started up yesterday, but uh, I went back and I figured if I wanted to add local localization, I should fix up the, the hints as well to make sure that they're in the right language. So uh, as you can see, it looks like it works just like it did before, but uh, it actually, uh, instead each uh, transition gets a special key from the game master which then returns the uh, right language uh, and the right uh, message that it needs so um, and then I have this test NPC here this is a test so uh, what this allows me to do is uh, I can basically uh, go to this window and create uh, new files for each language so I can just add in as many languages as I want um, and if I go to the game master I have a test to German language uh, basically all, all it says for all the items is this is a t test in German uh, as you can see, it uh, it works properly. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, in the final game, you'll be able to switch them as often as you want uh, in the options menu. This Thursday, I was. Uh, recoding some of the stuff with the character platformer um, and I made it so that um, the way his uh, slide attack and his shove attack work are more compatible with adding new uh, objects that are different than regular items so basically if we take a look at the code um, before I would have uh, this function here, item throw and item knockup, all the stuff that happens to the item would happen in these uh, functions, which is pretty bad if you want to keep adding stuff because then uh, like the connection will start to get messy and you'll have to keep adding in more checks to see if you're hitting the right thing. and. Um, Overall, it's a pretty bad way to do it. So uh, what you want to do is this thing called decoupling. So it basically makes it so you try to make every object as independent from another object as you can. And so the way I fixed this was using a function called send message. And what this does is uh, whatever um, game object reference you call this on, you can basically just tell it the uh, function name and it'll just figure out where it is automatically on the object that you uh, got through like a collision uh, or something. So in this case I did a overlap sphere check. So it basically creates a sphere in front of the player and checks to see if there's anything inside of it. Um, and then it'll like get a reference to that game object. So I basically use that reference, send the, uh, use the send message function. And then I created a new um, script just for the items. And they have these uh, public functions that I can call with the send message function. 
So I don't even need a reference to this exact uh, component. I just send it to the game object and it figures out that it needs to activate this function or this function. And what that does is say if I want to make, um, well, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm changing the, the coins to crystals. And so the character will have to slide into these or shove them in order to break them open and get the crystal bits. And uh, so since these are different than uh, items that you can pick up and stuff, um, it's going to be a lot easier now that I have the send message function. So all I have to do is make a new um, script for the crystals. And then I just make another public function called the exact same thing called, uh, um, or I think I have, yeah, I have a get damaged function here. So basically, uh, since the items won't get destroyed at all, they don't have a get damage function. But all I have to do is make a function called public void get damaged on the crystal script. And then I can just make it so it gets destroyed and turned into a bunch of uh, bits that you can pick up. And then also, like if I added uh, enemies that you fight, uh, I could add the exact same function name to their script and then have different functionality where they would take a certain amount of uh, hit points every time you uh, damage them by sliding into them. And then after they run out of health, then they would uh, die or whatever. So uh, yeah, that's what I did on uh, today. Um, just went through and uh, kind of cleaned that up. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that for the pickup item scripts because that's pretty much specifically just for item objects and most of what happens uh, has to do with the, the player position anyways so I'm just gonna stick to um, throwing items because I'm I think I'm gonna plan on being able to uh, throw enemies as well I think that'd be pretty funny and then yeah also uh, and knocking the enemies into the air and shoving them. I still have to uh, finish the shove script. It's still kind of incomplete, but uh, I'll worry about that later. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep working on the crystals on Friday and I'll see you in like two seconds. All right, lads, it's Friday. Um, this Friday, I just wanted to finish off the week by making um, the crystals. So I made like a rough version of how I want the crystals to be. It's in no way final, but uh, basically we have uh, three different sizes and depending on the size is how, much, how many crystals will drop when you smash them. So, uh, when you smash a small one, a single bit will drop, and I kind of thought it would be fun to make them like bounce around and you have to like chase them in order to pick them up. So when you get in a certain range of them, then uh, you grab them and it adds it to your uh, money amount that you can see on the top left. So if we smash a medium sized one, then two will drop, and then three for this one. And yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Some of them go flying off in the distance. I'm probably going to make it so they stay within a certain radius of where they started from. Um, and then I also need to make it so when you're in the range, instead of them just disappearing, it'll make like a cool animation where they kind of like fly around and then into you. Um, and then that will mean you collected it and then it'll add like an um it'll add to your uh, money amount and then it'll probably have like a animation for the ui as well to make it um obvious that you've collected uh, some amount of uh, crystals but yeah um that's gonna be it for me for this weekend or for this week and um yeah, I hope you have a good weekend, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.